Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. So lately the videos on this channel have focused on highlighting the impact of the release of .NET 8. The official release of .NET 8 is due to be released in November of this year, 2023. So next month, this is very exciting indeed. One of the many enhanced features of .NET that will be included in the release of .NET 8 is AOT, ahead of time compilation. So I thought it would be a great time to look at a broad overview of how .NET works. We'll look at just-in-time compilation, and at the end of the video, we'll look at what is meant by ahead-of-time compilation and the significance of ahead-of-time compilation. Firstly, what is .NET? Basically, .NET is a platform on which a software developer can develop a diverse array of types of applications that can run on a diverse array of devices. You have probably heard of one or more of the following. C Sharp, Visual Basic, C, C++, JavaScript, Java, Go, Rust, and so on. These are, of course, programming languages. Some programming languages, for example, Java and C Sharp, run in their own special environment that runs on top of the relevant operating system, like, for example, Windows, Mac OS, or various Linux distributions. C Sharp and Java code are not run directly on the operating system. Code compiled from languages like C or C++ can run directly on the operating system. I've heard this referred to as running software close to the metal. Java runs in an environment known as the JRE, the Joe Rogan Experience. Uh, no, no, the Java Runtime Environment. JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. And C Sharp runs in an environment known as .NET. Within the JRE is the JVM, Java Virtual Machine. The Java Virtual Machine is an abstract machine. It is a specification that provides a runtime environment in which Java bytecode can be executed. Within .NET is the CLR, or Core CLR. CLR stands for Common Language Runtime and can be likened in many ways to the Java Virtual Machine. The Common Language Runtime provides services like JIT compilation, just-in-time compilation, automatic memory management, garbage collection, security, and exception handling. With close to the metal programming languages, the developer needs to write the code, for example, to handle certain memory management tasks. So, for example, the developer writes the code to allocate a memory address, i.e., a storage location in memory where data for a particular variable's value needs to be stored. Let's say the relevant variable stores data for an object. Once, for example, the object is no longer used in code, you'll want to free that memory space taken up by that object. So you want that memory space freed up for the storage of data for variables currently being used in code. This freeing up of memory space is known as garbage collection. With a .NET language like c -sharp, this garbage collection is handled by the CLR, Common Language Runtime. Memory management, like for example the allocation of memory space for a variable, is handled by the Common Language Runtime. Concerns like memory management and garbage collection are taken care of by the Common Language Runtime automatically. So rapid application development can be achieved with languages like c -sharp and Java because many of the mundane repetitive management tasks like memory management and garbage collection are abstracted away by their respective runtimes. Another advantage of this is the separation of concerns. Memory management and garbage collection tasks are developed, debugged and tested on your behalf and you don't have to worry about the robustness of such tasks. When you write code for such tasks yourself, you have to be responsible for ensuring that these tasks are robust and not prone to, for example, memory leaks, security issues, and general code-related errors. .NET includes a large number of base class libraries that .NET developers can include in their applications where needed for the implementation of generic tasks like, for example, string manipulation or file handling or simple tasks like printing data to the console screen and so on. .NET facilitates the inclusion of NuGet packages within .NET applications. NuGet is a package manager for .NET and enables developers to create, share, and consume useful .NET libraries. 
a NuGet package basically contains reusable code that other developers have made available to you to use in your projects. A developer may wish to use EF Core, for example, in order to leverage SQL Server database creation, data manipulation, and data migration functionality. The appropriate NuGet package can be included in the relevant .NET project, and the relevant EF Core dependencies are therefore added to the project. Microsoft Learn says the following about NuGet packages. NuGet is a package manager for the .NET ecosystem and is the primary way developers discover and acquire .NET open source libraries. So basically, the base class libraries shipped with .NET and NuGet packages contain libraries that can be included as dependencies within .NET applications. These libraries contain assemblies. Let's see what Microsoft Learn says about assemblies. Assemblies are the fundamental units of deployment, version control, reuse, activation scoping, and security permissions for .NET-based applications. An assembly is a collection of types and resources that are built to work together and form a logical unit of functionality. Assemblies take the form of executable, exe, or dynamic link library, DLL, files, and are the building blocks of .NET applications. So what does an assembly contain? An assembly contains metadata, which is essentially data about data. So an assembly is self-contained and self-describing. The relevant metadata describes the code, for example, the various types included in the assembly. An assembly contains CIL code. CIL stands for Common Intermediate Language. When you compile your C-sharp code or your VB code, through, for example, an appropriate .NET SDK, CLI command, or through Visual Studio. Your code is typically not compiled immediately into machine language code, i.e. code that your computer CPU understands. At this point, your code is compiled into common intermediate language code, CIL code. Let's look at what Microsoft Learn says about common intermediate code. It is a product of compilation of code written in high-level .NET languages, like, for example, c -sharp, VB.NET, or f -sharp. Once you compile your code written in one of these languages, you will get a binary that is made out of IL. It is important to note that the IL is independent from any specific language that runs on top of the runtime. So of course, in order for your IL code to do anything useful, it must first be compiled into machine language code, i.e. a language that your computer's CPU, central processing unit, understands. So how does .NET do this? Let's look at an overview of how just-in-time compilation works. So the higher level .NET language, for example, c -sharp, Visual Basic .NET, or f -sharp, is first compiled into common intermediate language code. This common intermediate language code lives inside .NET assemblies that are saved to the target computer's relevant storage facility. So when, for example, a method is called at runtime from within a particular assembly, the JIT compiler service that is provided by the common language runtime or core CLR in .NET first checks to see if the code for the relevant method is compiled into machine language code. Remember, the IL code cannot be understood by the CPU. If the relevant IL code has not been compiled into machine language code, the JIT service compiles the relevant IL code into machine language code. The relevant machine language code can now be understood by the CPU of the target computer, so your computer can now run the relevant code i.e. run the relevant functionality of the method. If the IL code for the relevant method, however, has already been compiled by the JIT service into machine language code, the relevant machine language code is immediately run and the JIT service is smart enough to know that the relevant method's IL code does not need to be compiled into machine language code. So that is basically how just-in-time compilation works in .NET. Let's discuss AOT ahead of time compilation. Publishing your app as native AOT produces an app that's self-contained and that has been ahead of time compiled to native code. Native AOT apps have faster startup time and smaller memory footprints. These apps can run on machines that don't have the .NET runtime installed. The benefit of native AOT is most significant for workloads with a high number of deployed 
instances such as cloud infrastructure and hyperscale services. Native AOT deployment is currently in preview for ASP.NET Core 8.0. The native AOT deployment model uses an ahead-of-time compiler to compile IL to native code at the time of publish. Native AOT apps don't use a just-in-time JIT compiler when the application runs. Native AOT apps can run in restricted environments where a JIT isn't allowed. Native AOT applications target a specific runtime environment, such as Linux x64 or Windows x64, just like publishing a self-contained app. And you can see that with the latest stable release of .NET, which at the time of creating this video is .NET 7, you are able to ahead of time compile your code, but AOT supported in .NET 8 is more comprehensive than in .NET 7. There are still limitations for AOT even with .NET 8, and you can read about these limitations at this URL. So .NET is a very powerful environment. It allows for language interoperability. So for example, in your C-sharp code, you could derive an object from code written in Visual Basic .NET and vice versa. In .NET, you can write once and run anywhere. .NET is cross-platform. So your code will run on, for example, Windows operating systems, Mac OS, various Linux distributions, mobile devices, so Android and iOS, and many more. You can create IoT applications, so your c -sharp code can run on tiny devices. So the same skills for building, for example, desktop applications can be used for building an application on a tiny device like a Raspberry Pi for Internet of Things applications. You are virtually unlimited with the types of applications that you can build using .NET. .NET is modular and agile. The .NET common language runtime contains a large number of base class libraries. The common language runtime includes services like just-in-time compilation, security, memory management, garbage collection, and exception handling. .NET facilitates the inclusion of a huge number of open source libraries through NuGet packages, and a NuGet package management system can be used to include NuGet packages into your projects. .NET is awesome. I hope you have enjoyed this video that discusses how .NET works at a high level. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Please also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this through my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will be greatly appreciated. I've recently joined X, formerly Twitter, so please feel free to follow me on X. My username is at Gavin Digital. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.